All right, so we're back here at Breezy Knoll Farms in Leiden, Massachusetts. I have Angie here with me. And so Angie, here in your barn, can you talk to us about a history on this farm and just introduce us to your farm? Um, hi, I'm Angie Facey. I'm co-owner operator of Breezy Knoll Farm. We currently milk about 124 cows on two Lady A5s. Um, we have two Discovery Collectors and we have a Juno. We, um, in the past, have milked anywhere from 45 to 190 cows, but we've settled on that 120-ish number. Works best for us. We're in the process of building a milk processing plant, which I like to call the creamery, um, on our farm. And it will be bottled and labeled as Our Family Farms, which is a milk co-op that we're part of. And so this is um, a family farm, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And so yes. um, you guys are second generation, correct? Yes, so this is um, my husband's family farm. I grew up on a dairy farm in Central Mass. My mom would probably correct me and say that I'm technically fourth generation <laughs> yeah. because her dad and granddad were um, dairy farmers. But yes, um, Randy's dad started the farm um, with his mom back in 1972, and Randy and I took over um, in 2004, the year we got married. All right, well, if you don't mind, let's keep walking behind us and we can talk a little bit about your barn and uh, maybe good. some changes that have happened over the years. Okay. Perfect. We'll have to. So we didn't get too far, and then Angie, I noticed, you know, a little bit of weathered wood and this uh, new wood here. Can you talk to me about your barn and maybe what you mounted before to now? So in 2004, Jerry and I got married, we bought my parents' herd, and we built the middle section of the of this farm. Um, it only housed about half the milking herd, so we still had the other half of the milking herd in the old wood barn that uh, our great dad built to house. Oh, okay. Um, and unfortunately, we weren't able to add on uh, for quite a long time. We added a pretty fresh barn that was intended to be a holding area someday. Um, and we got up to milking about 190 in a six stall step up car. Okay, all right. It was a long day. <laughs> I just, yeah, a lot of labor, long days, yes. A lot of labor, a lot of labor. Um, so after um, an unexpected herdsman quit and a car accident, we decided we needed to reevaluate what we were doing. Okay. And yeah. we um, visited lots of robot farms and we decided to put in the two A5s. Uh, we started up in December 2019. All right, so in 2019, you were saying, we is that when you up. started up? Yes. We actually started building on the far end um, of the farm, adding the robot room starting in 2018. Okay. The project took a lot longer than expected to get the financing to all come through, yep. and we didn't end up starting up until 2019. So back to the original question, that's the original barn, but we added on the last 60 stalls in oh, okay. 2020. So September 2020 is when the rest of the barn is complete. So we started up milking 88 cows on two robots, um, that that winter and then added on. And can continually grow. Yes. All right. Perfect. And so my question for you then too, going from Step Up Parlor, the transition to robots. What you said there was some um, circumstances around the farm and that changed. But what was that um, conversation for for you, uh, you and your husband to change from the parlor to robots? <laughs> um, it took a long time to convince me. Okay. Because I really likes to milk my cows. Yeah. Um, but on the way to a Jack and Jill, we stopped at a, a friend's dairy farm that had recently put in robots, and okay. it really got me thinking that this could actually work for us. Yeah. Um, labor's hard to find, and by having the robots, we're able to provide a better job for our employees. Yeah. Um, they can be more flexible with their hours, especially if they have families, um, and it's it's a lot more a lot more. You know, working with cows instead of just milking. Just the milking process up. So it took a little bit to get you convinced, but you, when you saw it in practice, everything started to click. It started to click. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. All right, well, we can keep moving down the bar. Uh, I couldn't help but notice you've, you've checked your watch a couple times. So can you talk to me about how you're managing this herd when you're on the farm, when you're not, and what's mm -hmm. that like? Right, so I'm not actually on the farm all the time. I have an office uh, 15 minutes away that when the creamery opens, I will be here all the time, but I get notifications on my watch of any of the robot notifications or someone's in heat or someone's in distress um, or anything. Yeah. And then, you know, I use my phone, I can get on the Horizons app and yeah. check any data that I need if I want to see if somebody's been milked yet or 
um, you know, if a rumination has come up or where she is in lactation or, you know, someone says, oh, this one's messing around, yeah. you know, is she pregnant? Does she need to be bred? But without technology, I wouldn't be able to, to do any of that. Yeah. And so coming from your old system to this, how has that changed you? Uh, it's amazing. Um, yeah. Okay. It's yeah. And the way, okay. We didn't even have milk weights in the old okay, system. Okay. Yes. And so the data you can I, get. We had to, you know, I had to ask everybody to write something down. I couldn't yeah. look back in history to see, okay, well, was she dropping in milk for several days or was it a, an immediate drop? Yeah. So I'm able to have all that history and I can, I can make decisions from my phone when I'm not even here. Yeah. Awesome. So I just had to ask you about it because I've yes. seen them pop up yeah. and so that means there must be stuff going yes. on around the farm. So we came a little bit further down here um, and we have one robot room right behind us. And Angie, when you guys were picking out a robot layout, what kind of stuck out about having a specialty needs pen right behind us and, and how that fit best for your farm and, and what you've noticed now? Mm -hmm. um, we've never really had a special needs pen. It's kind okay. of a, yeah. a thing that's overlooked on a lot of dairy farms or your special needs pen is also your calving pen or you know you can't use it the way you want to use it. Yeah. Um, and so when we ended on added on to the other end of the barn we were able to put two big calving pens um, and then right next to the robot room we have special needs pens and these are probably my favorite part of the barn because any yeah. cow that's off just a little bit you can throw her in the special needs pen give her hay for a couple of days yeah. and watch her milk close and you know she comes along a lot better than um, if she had to be out feeding for feeding. And so you're just uh, you know having a little bit different layout and a little more focus on a managing side you just have seen not only in yourselves but then you're with the cows as well you can yes. that extra special attention. Yes that they absolutely need. Yeah. and you know this is the first time in our dairy farming career that we've had enough space for all of this animals. Yeah. Nobody's out overcrowded everybody has it really makes a huge difference in our operation. Yeah. So Andy, what do you say, uh, you talked about having the processing creamery being, being built. Let's yeah. go check it out if that works for you. That would be great. All right, let's head this way. All right, so we made it over here to the processing uh, plant. As you can tell, it is still being built, but got a little bit of rain out here. We'll help. Uh, what do you think about going inside? Sure, All right. Me. All right, so we made it in here, absolutely gorgeous. As we said, it's still under a little bit of construction here. Uh, we also ran into Randy, who is the other half of Breezy Knoll Farms here. Um, so Randy, are you able to tell me what are we standing in right now? What is this gonna be going forward? This is gonna be our retail space and our office space for our processing plant. Processing plant, so um, if anyone were to come in, if they're in the area and wanted to buy a jug of milk or anything, they'd be able to stop up here yep. and buy some right here. All right, perfect. And so I know a lot of different rooms in this building. Is that all right if uh, we go and check some more of this out? Perfect. All right, we'll head this way. Right, so we're, I don't even know what to call this room because this process is so new to me. Randy, can you talk about what room we're in and what's all happening in here? This is our actual processing room. Processing room, okay. Uh, this is where we pasteurize the milk and bottle the milk. Okay. So this is a clean room, as it is not right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's, it's in process, being built, right? Um, over here we have a HTST pasteurizer. Okay. Which will pasteurize all of our white milk products yeah. and homogenize them. Okay. Um, we have a milk separator that will separate the cream off, which we pasteurize in a pasteurizer, where we can also make drinkable yogurts. We can make regular yogurt if we want to someday. Yeah. Uh, culture products, flavored milks. Yup. And then they go into the storage tanks when they're ready. Okay. And then later on in the day, we'll get a crew of us together and fill the jugs and put them in the cooler. So this is the bottling process and yes. filling process in here right there. All right. And so, you know, a lot of what's going on in here is building for the future, expanding some products that your milk can um, can create, right? Yes. Is, is that the whole goal of, of what's going on in here? Yes. Perfect. And so turning now to you, Angie, how did this all come about? Did, you know, did this one day um, you guys wake up, we want to build this? Or what was this process of getting to where we are right now? 25 years we're trying to get here. 25, 25 years. years. Yeah. Okay. So we've had a, a brand name, our family farms label in stores for 25 years. Okay. Um, but it hasn't been processed at a local processor for most of that time. So okay. we wanted to bring it back to the farm yeah. and have it, you know, all local milk done full by control. real farmers, full control over everything, yep. and then, you know, get it to the store and, you know, we're the face to the consumers. Yeah. Um, obviously to build a plant like this, it, it's very expensive. 
Um, when the pandemic happened, there was a lack of local food infrastructure in Massachusetts. Okay. So Governor Baker um, announced a, a grant program called the Food Security Infrastructure Grant Program, which uh, we applied for and actually got. Um, so we got a, a good chunk of money to buy you know, a lot of the new equipment. Yes, yes. yes. We were hoping we were going to get it, but we didn't think we would. And the day we did, we were like, now what do we do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so writing that grant, whole new process for you guys. How, how was that a lot of learning and investigating leading up to it? Or what did that? Actually, um, we have been down this road several times. Okay. The co-op has been trying to build a plant for years. His dad's been the biggest advocate for building a plant for our family farms. Yeah. Um, the grant application wasn't super complicated. They just wanted to know. We already have the story that it was asking right. for. Right. They just, you know, needed to know how we were going to get local food to local people. Yeah. So it was a good fit. Yes. And so currently, right now, how are people locally able to, to yeah. purchase any of your milk products right now? Yeah. Right now, we have gallons and half gallons um, okay. of whole through skin in um, local retail stores, grocery stores, coffee shops use it. Yeah. Um, and when the plant is up and running, we'll be able to add different sizes, uh, quartz, pints, yeah. the flavored milk. Um, we'll have cream, heavy cream, half and half, things like that that we've never had. So we'll be able to you know, hopefully bring on more customers. Yes, and so then standing in here, right, nearing completion, you know, what what does this mean to you guys? You know, uh, going before the grant process, during it, and now seeing so it start to come together. What does this mean for you guys in Breezy Knoll Farms? Um, this is something for the next generation. Yeah. Really, I mean, we were trying, the robots were to finish our career. Yeah. Um, and this is actually gonna make it possible to carry on beyond us. To go further. Sweet. Well, I'm excited. I can't wait to try some of your guys' products and hopefully come back once this is all done okay. here. But yes, if we keep moving. All right, so I see that the Discovery Collector is moving behind us. Can you talk to me about your decision to put that in this barn and uh, and what options you had and why you also didn't with it down? We looked at Al alley scrapers as well. Um, my wife and I never liked the pool of manure in front of an alley scraper. Okay. Um, we thought those were really interesting in the fact that if something breaks on them, you can still come in with a loader. It's easy to remove. You can work on it. But they've been amazingly reliable, and we haven't had to do that. Haven't had to do that. So. Yeah. And so then um, you just have two of them, one on each side, to go yep. around. And, okay. And, and so I see that it's dumping there. And so we did reduce a lot of labor from what in a system you were in before or just not not too much Actually, on that end? We started the scrapers about a year after we started the robots. Okay. Um, I think it actually saved us more time than the robots did at first. <laughs> really? Okay, yeah. I just had to ask you about him. And so then I also know that we have the Juno that's been moving up and down the feed alley. How have you noticed differences and what are some advantages that you've seen with that? We actually put the Juno in before we started the robots. Okay. Um, so we got to see its kind of performance on a separate level. Yeah. Um, and for our 80 cows at the time, we had equated that it was almost $1,400 a month in a benefit. $1,400 a month benefit. Okay. Versus pushing, we had pushed up four times a day. Before. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So that's interesting to see that before and to already yeah. have some of that in numbers and then now kind of having it all work together. And yep. Wow. Right. So let's head into a robot room and talk a little bit uh, about some things going on in there, if that works for you. Yep. Perfect. All right. So we found our way here into one of the two robot rooms. We've got an A5 working right behind us. Reed, what was your decision for putting in robots? You know, I know you're coming from the step up parlor and so going from that to this, what was that decision? We actually fell in love with the robots the first time we saw some in operation. Okay. Just the atmosphere in the barn and the way the cows were acting 24 hours a day was just amazing. Yeah. The, the, the little calmer, the free flow coming in. Yeah. Yeah. And so was that an adjustment for, for your herd at all? Or did that kind of, how did that, how did we start going? Yeah. Excellent. The transition yeah. went very fast. Um, yeah, really no complaints. Um, this is way easier to transition a first cat pepper in. Okay, yeah. Um, to get a first cat pepper to step up 15 inches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's challenges. Yep, that's fair. Right. And so then on your guys' end, management-wise, of now having robots, how have you seen differences, um, you know, from managing cows and robots? 
but the big thing is that there's so much more collective management of the board and now it's so easy to fix individual problems and find take the individual care each cow needs. Yeah. Um, still our favorite cows are the ones that have and you don't see them again until it's time to dry them off. Yes. Yep. But those that have problems are so easy to help them through the problem. Yeah, you're able to fine tune and focus on those yes. that need the extra attention. Yep. Awesome. Sweet. Well, mm -hmm. how did you stop in here and see how these work and we can head back up and keep going. Thanks. Looks like the next generation that we were just talking about has arrived back. I'll let you guys get back to your day. Thank you guys so much, both of you, for letting us come out here, taking a tour of your farm. And like I said, can't wait to come back out, try all the products once this is up and running. Thank you guys again. Thank you. Yeah.